alhamdulillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulillah. Many people don't get the significance of uh, Yom Arafat. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really describes it as being the day in which Allah Azza wa Jal forgives more people and answers more dua than on any other day throughout the entire year. To the point that shaitan throws dust over his head. Distraught at the uh, amount of people who have gained the mercy and the pleasure of Allah Azza So this is the the most uh, virtuous of days, and if anything, it is two days what uh, Laylatul Qadr is tonight. So this is the day equivalent, the daytime equivalent of Laylatul Qadr, for which people, you know, we have this great sense. So I'm grateful that I have this opportunity to speak to you. Now I'm also going to be trying to. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just, I'm on my phone with, with, you know, this is, we're trying to manage a few different things today. So I'm doing this on my phone. So I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that I'm not speaking to myself. You're able to hear me, inshallah ta'ala. And if you can't, then alhamdulillah. The Prophet of Allah said, uh, The very best of prayers, the very best of dua is the dua made on the day of Arafah. And the best of invocations that I have made, I and the prophets that came before me, was this La ilaha illallah wahda. Jazakallah khair. Someone just confirmed that they can hear me. Excellent. There is none worthy of worship but Allah alone. La sharika lah. He has no partner. Lahul mulk. His is the kingdom. Walahul hamd. And his is all praise and glory. Wahua ala kulli shayin qadir. And over all things is Allah all powerful. Why do I mention this? So this is interesting. It's a Sahih hadith. Imam al Tirmidhi relates it in his Sunan. And it's widely accepted as, you know, both it tells us about the significance of Yom Arafah, but it also tells us another really important thing. What sounds like a dhikr to you and me? Everything I've just said, La ilaha illallah wahda, la sharika la, lahul mulk, wa lahul hamdu, wa ala kulli shayin qadir. We consider to be among the adhkar. The Prophet mentions this in the context of dua. Khairu dua, dua Yom Arafah. Wa khairu ma qultu ana, wa nabiyuna min qabli. La ilaha illallah wahda ila akhir. He said the very best of dua is the dua of Arafah. And the best invocation that I and the prophets before me have made is what essentially is not really a dua as such. We think of dua as, oh Allah, please grant me this. Oh Allah, please forgive my sins. Oh Allah, I ask of you Jannah. And that is beautiful uh, dua. Yeah, you know, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Afdalu dhikri la ilaha illallah. وَأَفْضَلُ الدُّعَاءَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ The very best of dhikr is La ilaha illallah and the very best of dua is Alhamdulillah. So what does this tell us? It tells us that calling unto Allah is connecting with Him by recognizing Him. And this, this period of time right now, the reason for the sanctity of Yom Arafah is because it is Yom Arafah. Adamu Rabbahu. Yom, uh, the day on which Adam came on after having been sent onto earth was made to recognize and find the way to win himself his way back into the bounty of his Lord. This is the Yom Arafah because Allah Azza wa Jal said, minkum ba'dukum li adu. We said to uh, Adam and Hawa, Ihbitu minha. Get down from Jannah. And your offspring will have enmity between them. And for a period of time, the earth will be your place of, of residing. The earth will be where you stay and where you live your lives. Now, should there come to you from me guidance? And what is the guidance? That which brings you back to me after having been after having been uh, banished, sent away for a period of time, it's cast out of Jannatu Adn, the Garden of Eden. Should guidance then come to you from me, then who, whosoever follows my guidance 
my guidance, a, uh, i.e. the guidance that leads you to me. Nothing will, no fear will they, will they suffer, nor will they have cause to grieve. My brothers and sisters, this is the day of Arafah in which Allah Azza wa Jal forgave uh, vast, uh, forgives vast amounts of his servants because they turn to him and follow in, their foot, in the footsteps of their father Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, their mother Hawa alayhi salatu wasalam. فَتَلَقَى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ It was here on this day that Adam received from his Lord certain words. And finally was he able to make his, uh, make his, make his peace with Allah. Was he able to achieve redemption from Allah Azza wa Jal? So to be absolved, this is, this is the day. This is why this day, you know, is a day that really our words need to be, and I'm grateful to the organizers. They said to me, you've got 15 minutes. I said, Alhamdulillah. Because this is the day when the words we share among ourselves need to be minimized. Because it's a day when the words we present to Allah Azza wa Jal, this is what it's all about. But it's a, the point of legacy. Whoever holds on to the guidance that comes to you thereafter will have no cause to fear, nor will they, uh, nor will they grieve. So the legacy that Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, received on this day was to make his peace with Allah. The legacy that he leaves for the, his offspring, and that Allah azza wa jal said, anbiya and rusul, to the children of Adam, was how we make uh, our uh, place Allah front and center of our lives. How we locate Allah. There's a reason that the Hajj, when you think of Hajj, the first image that comes to your mind is, of course, people making tawaf. Whenever we speak about the house of Allah, we see the Kaaba, we see people making tawaf. That's a very physical um, expression of placing Allah front and center. Go to Mecca, the house of Allah. But th this instead is meant to inform, it's meant to inspire and infuse us for the rest of our lives. You don't spend, you can only do tawaf in, 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 in Mecca. Tawaf is an act of worship that can't be done anywhere else in the world. But keeping Allah in the center of our lives, what the Tawaf symbolizes is an obligation that we're meant to take with us for the rest of our lives. And this is what uh, a Nabi uh, and Khalilullah Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, and his wife, uh, our mother Hajar alayhi salam, his, his son Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, what they represent for us on the day that is celebrated tomorrow, the day of, of, of recognition, the day of Ma'rifah, the day that uh, Ibrahim and his son uh, have made their peace. When Ibrahim says to his son, finally, uh, I'm seeing myself in, this, in, in, in a dream that I'm putting you to the knife, that I'm slaughtering you. Now tell me, dear son, what, what do you make of this? My dear father, do as you are instructed. The day of, of recognition, the day of, of reconciling and making their peace with what seemed an insurmountable task, a huge asking, is Yom Arafah. But the day that comes after is the day of reward, is the day of reward. So this is the legacy that is bequeathed to us. And it's to commemorate this, that for centuries and centuries, generations and generations, thousands of years later, we have the privilege of, of marking this day, celebrating this day, making takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Takbir at what? Takbir of the, at the triumph of faith over doubt, of uh, rising to Allah Azza wa Jal, rising to the occasion, rising to the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal, and placing that above all else, and thereby finding victory in this world and for all of eternity. And, that, and Allah Azza wa Jal didn't uh, debase or, 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 or uh, forsake his beloved, uh, Al-Khalil, alayhi salatu wasalam. He brought, he says, وَفَدَيْنَاهُ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمْ قَدْ صَدَقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا Ibrahim, you've done it. You have fulfilled. And so, فَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ Instead of having to make this, this enormous personal sacrifice, Allah Azza wa Jal was pleased with the, the spirit of faith that burned brightly within the hearts of Ibrahim and his son and his wife. And this is the fulfillment. This is what we take away. And this is why the Quran says, It's not the meat, the flesh, the relationship you have with the heavens, your relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal, that thing that comes from your heart and links you to above the seven heavens and the earth and with the arsh of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's what gets to Allah. 
So this is our legacy. Let Eid, therefore, not just be an occasion of nice clothes. Allah makes this day a day of, uh, and, and this occasion, an occasion of reflection. It's not just about giving money to the people who are poor around the world and suffering, but also to connect. People feed, alhamdulillah, that's the thing that people do. There are people hungry, someone, it's in the human fitrah. You don't even have to have iman. You don't even have to have faith to feel that we need to support our brothers and sisters who are hungry, who are thirsty, who are, who are dying. There's a human response that brings us to that. But a faith-based response is one that is concerned with the hunger and the thirst and the poverty and the suffering. But it's also concerned with the preservation of the faith of generations come, generations to come. I end with this reflection. Allah Azza wa Jal instructed Ibrahim alayhi salam to take Hajar, to take Ismail, yet a, a, a small a child, a baby in arms, to this place with nothing. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, and his belief in the promise of God and his sense of a legacy is can be seen in the dua he makes. Rabbi ni askantu min dhurriyati. Lord, I've left my only child. Beware ghaydi zi by in a valley which has no cultivation, no fruit, no vegetable, no means of survival. Ainda baytika al-muharram by the side of your sacred house. Now, you, most people think the next thing to come is, oh Allah, how are they going to survive? What are they going to live on? What are they going to eat? What are they going to drink? How are they? His next sentence, Rabbana liyuqimu salah. The legacy is what I'm concerned with, my Lord, that this son of mine that I leave as a baby in tears, hungry and, and without food and, and any means of nourishment, it is my faith that this child will go on to revive your worship of this land. Rabbana liyuqimu salah, that he and his offspring, that my, the wife I leave behind and and, and the people that will come from, from, from my son and from the other community, may he was to see with eyes that are not blinded and deceived by the, the, the chopping and changing winds of this world.